ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving myself a Father's Day present here on the 15th day of June, 2014. I am standing up for the Second Amendment, the right to self-defense that any free human has. I'm standing up for my children. That's the gift I want is my two daughters and my son to grow up in a country like I grew up in where we have a right to keep and bear arms, unlike parts of the nation that aren't part of the U.S., Chicago, New York, and D.C. that have the highest crime rates in the country where they have an abolition of the citizens' right to keep and bear arms, despite the fact five years ago the Supreme Court in D.C. versus Heller said you've got to let people defend themselves. Now, joining us for this segment is the Chief Legislative Counsel for Gun Owners of America. And you can always tell when the attack on the Second Amendment's heating up because you'll suddenly start hearing NRA, GOA on every week. You heard Larry Pratt, the head of gun owners, on last Sunday. Well, now we've got their chief legislative uh, counsel, uh, their lawyer who's up on Capitol Hill here, to discuss a bunch of chilling statements we saw in the New York Times last week by the White House saying we're getting ready to use executive orders. Then Obama talked to CBS News, and you can watch the full interview at InfoWars.com or Reuters. RT also reported on it. And he basically said, look, we need to go ahead and do what Australia did. Well, Australia banned guns, everything but, but single shot. It made you get a license for that, and their muggings and crime rate went up. Here's the RT headline. Reuters had a similar headline. Obama cites Australia's gun confiscation program as an example for U.S. Remember, he promised during the campaign to not come after anybody's guns, and so did Joe Biden. Here's part of that clip, and we'll find out how bad it is is this another attempt, like they did last year, to come after the Second Amendment? Uh, here's a clip from CBS News. A couple of decades ago, Australia uh, had a mass shooting, mm -hmm. uh, similar to Columbine or, or Newtown. Uh, and Australia just said, well, that's it. We're, we're not, doing, we're not do seeing that again. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. basically imposed very severe, tough, uh, gun laws, and they've never, they haven't had a mass shooting since. Total lies. The U.S. is one of the lowest crime rates in the industrialized world. Just Department's own numbers. Overall shootings are down 52 percent. Just Department's own numbers from 92 to 2011. Mass shootings are flat. Most of them are gang related. Honeybees kill over 100 people more than mass shootings every year. Even Esquire looked into that and did an article on it when I was in one of their articles last year and, and did find. It was in a whole separate article from the interview with me going, yes, honeybees are more dangerous. I mean, this is ridiculous. And there isn't an epidemic, and Australia has had more mass shootings. You're always going to have stuff like this. But, but enough of me breaking that down. I wanted to get a quick update on this Sunday, on this Father's Day, from Mike Hammond with Gun Owners of America, gunowners.org. Are they warming up for another full-scale assault on the Second Amendment, this time extrajudicially? He's already legalizing the illegals. And, and telling him, you know, if you can get here, you're legal and overflowing the military bases. I mean, this, this seems to be rule by decree. I thought, I think they have a name for that, don't they? Yeah, uh, it's uh, basically uh, ignorance of the Constitution, among other things, and perhaps also treason. Uh, but uh, I, I, the answer is yes. I, I think we need to be concerned about what's happening. Uh, you don't pop the cork until they bang the gavel. And specifically, Harry Reid is now saying, and Dick Durbin, who's the number two guy in uh, the Democratic leadership in the Senate, is now saying, well, maybe it's time to bring up Toomey Mansion. You remember what that was? That was you can't buy a gun in this country without having, uh, without going through a gun dealer. Well, guess what they're trying to do at the same time? as they're trying to require you to go through a gun dealer in order to buy a gun. They're trying to shut down the gun dealers. And they do that uh, by what's called Operation Choke Point and the Department of Justice, in which they have effectively uh, uh, said, we're going to classify gun dealers along with pornographers, along with people who dr sell drug uh, paraphernalia, along with uh, payday loan people. And as a result, we're going make every effort to dry up credit for the gun dealers and gun manufacturers, and we're going to make every effort to make sure that gun dealers and gun manufacturers can process credit cards through things like PayPal. And for those so who don't know, called, that's already happening to gun dealers and gun shops everywhere being kicked out of their banks. They're being listed as high risk. They're making us a criminal class outside of law. But you see what the combination of 
those two things mean. If you can't buy a gun without going through a gun dealer, and if there are no gun dealers within 200 miles of you, because Barack Obama has effectively shut all of them down, the Second Amendment is effectively dead to you. And that is precisely what Barack Obama is intending to do right now. It's incredible, but, but they've also talked about making us put biometrics on all the guns by executive order. Holder did that a month ago in Congress, as you know. And what about this bold statement about, you know, what Australia did was really great? I mean, that's scary. Well, it sort of is intriguing, isn't it, uh, that the Bloombergs and the Obamas of the world say, oh, no, we just want small, reasonable, common-sense gun control. And then their people go to Albany and go to Hartford and cheer as... Uh, legislation confiscating guns, legislation banning guns, legislation registering guns is passed, and then hop on Air Force One, and the next day in Washington they say, who said anything about confiscation? Uh, there's one thing, uh, there are very few advantages to being very old, but one is you see these things happening over and over and over again. The 68 Act, uh, the Brady Law, the Cole Amendment, the Lautenberg Amendment, all had a whole lot of things in common, but one of the things they had in common is this. People who had no intention of doing anything but banning every gun in America nevertheless came to us and said, well, if you trade off a little bit of, uh, a little bit of your freedom, we'll give you safety. <laughs> Guess what happened in every case? Killings went up. Uh, there was no safety, but... The gun control, which some people foolishly allowed to be passed, served as a platform for the next ratchet up of more gun control. Absolutely. Again, look at, you mentioned Connecticut, where the gun confiscation is going on. They're SWAT teaming people's houses. California, Bloomberg headline, gun confiscation begins. But they're even using extrajudicial, just saying your neighbors saw you had a gun. We're just taking them. And then they have a government psychiatrist say you're mentally ill with no, no judicial evidence. I mean, it's really getting frightening to now see when they basically banned and shut down manufacturing of many guns in California last year, they're now back with a whole new flotilla of legislation. I mean, the truth is... And, and it did absolutely no good in Isla Vista, except that it, it basically uh, said to the shooter, you can go down the street and shoot, and we will guarantee you that there's no one around who's going to shoot back. That's right. And then we saw uh, someone with a concealed carry was the person shot at Walmart, other than the two police officers, was a concealed carry person that basically started firing on them and pinned them down for the police uh, out in Las Vegas a few weeks ago. Uh, and Harry Reid's trying to pin that not just on me, not just the NRA, not just GOA, but even Ronald Reagan now. Because some Facebook page the guy supposedly had had Ronald Reagan on it. So now it's Ronald Reagan's fault. Did you know that? Well, uh, <laughs> I don't believe that, but uh, to the, uh, except to the extent that Ronald Reagan ultimately ended up supporting the Brady Law. That's right. So perhaps it is a little bit of his fault. But, um, <laughs> uh, but you know, as, as I say, when I was a kid, I, I, I would walk, uh, I was in ROTC during the Vietnam War, could, uh, as a 14-year-old kid, walked up and down our high school campus in our ghetto high school with an M1 semi-automatic rifle. No one thought I was going to shoot up the place. What happens in 1996, they passed federal legislation saying you can't have a gun in the school. Uh, almost immediately thereafter, there is a succession of copycat school right. shootings that has continued unabated. And media hyping it and creating an irrational phobia uh, of gun Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. 
And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality, freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. But, but finishing up with Mike Hammond, Chief Legal Analyst for Gun Owners of America, in the two minutes we've got left, what are some of the other attacks that are extra uh, judiciary outside of law? I mean, they admit they're going to use executive power to curtail our guns. Last time I heard, the executive doesn't legislate. Okay, let me talk about uh, two things. One, a minute. First of all, uh, the efforts of BATF to come into dealers in connection with their annual inspections and photocopy all of the uh, all of the gun records that is all the 4473s all the bound book records as a uh, effort to effectively create a national gun registry now we thought that was illegal and but if they have all the 4473s in Arizona setting in an office in Tucson and all of those in Nevada setting in an office in Las Vegas and they can all be accessed from Washington DC guess what you have a National Gun Registry, which should be very scary to people at this point. Secondly, import bans. Uh, Barack Obama, as you know, basically recently moved, well, he tried to move to cut off the import of all shotguns on the basis that they had no sporting purpose. I don't know what he thinks we do with them. He also tried to ban the import of, of, of Russian ammunition, hollow point ammunition, which is still in place unless we can get a Ted Cruz or a Rand Paul to offer an amendment to an appropriations bill to stop that. And finally, 80 House members wrote to Barack Obama and said, oh, we weren't able to pass a seminar ban. Guess what? You can do the same thing by banning the import of all semi-automatic firearms using your inherent executive authority. So, so they're doing a de facto move to restrict the Second Amendment. In the last 30 seconds, what message does it send to see and rhinos being defeated in every major primary by people like David Bratt. Well, I hope it sends a message that 2014 is going to be a tsunami year, because unless we take over the Senate and the House with real conservatives, then Harry Reid is going to use his cheat scheme rules to pack the courts and to turn the Second Amendment into a, as far as the courts are concerned, a nullity. This is life and death for this country. George Washington launched the nation. Obama is trying to kill it. You cannot mince words. It, it, is, it is too insane. Uh, thank you so much for your time, sir. Godspeed. You are watching the best of The Alex Jones Show. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Watch live at Infowars.com forward slash show or become a member of Infowarsnews.com and help us take resistance to the next level.